Cindy Caldwell has made more than 2,000 dives on oil rigs. Just days ago, she dove into Louisiana Gulf waters for the first time since the Deepwater Horizon explosion, taking the Associated Press to the spill zone to check for damage beneath the surface. We dove 35 miles from the Deepwater Horizon. The water looked clear and blue. We quickly descended to 115 feet, carefully taking in our surroundings just three divers, some curious fish, and a handful of very curious sharks, sharks who kept constant watch over our work. At times, it was like swimming in an aquarium, gorgeous, colorful fish, bright, vibrant, healthy coral, everything from amberjack to barracuda and jellyfish hovering in the water. Deep beneath the surface, everything looked normal, but on a rig called the cognac, we did notice something strange. All the way down to 35 feet, the barnacles, sponges, and few pieces of coral we saw were entirely lifeless. It was a clear line, easily visible. Take a look at this video. Below, where the fish are swimming, everything is alive, but as the camera rises up, you see a change. We also dove a second rig, 20 miles away, much closer into land. Here we saw the same thing, except the dead zone went even deeper. It was a very clear delineation of where the damage stopped or began, right about 65 feet on every vertical leg throughout that whole structure. There was residue, discoloration residue on the vertical legs of the oil rig down to about 65 feet. Below that, it was as though nothing had ever happened. That shallow water area looked, looked quite dead. To me, I mean, compared to what we normally see. Dr. Paul Samarco has spent 20 years studying life on oil rigs and found our pictures disturbing. This is video Dr. Samarco took before the spill, showing what it should look like at 30 feet on a rig in the same area as the ones we dove. And again, on our rigs, we saw virtually nothing alive above 35 feet. Generally, you can see at least colorful sponges and also uh, barnacles that are actively feeding and that kind of thing. I didn't see anything like that in yours. What caused this barren underwater landscape? No one knows for sure, but take a look at this video from diver Scott Porter. It's from the same rig we dove, but taken back on June 19th while oil was still gushing. At that time, the water here was so cloudy you can barely make out the other diver just a few feet away. So Marco believes Porter was diving in a toxic soup. It's not water anymore. And what it looked like to me was not just the greenness of the water, but there was something else in it, which is probably oil and dispersant. The big question is, did the Deepwater Horizon spill kill part of this artificial reef? It makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, the oil is, is toxic in itself. The dispersant is toxic. I'd say that there's a high probability if you have a, you've had a severe, I mean, a really severe spill there, and then a very aggressive treatment of that spill. I can't tell you exactly what is going on there because um, bottom line is the majority of my diving occurs on a natural coral reef. I'm not sure of what is normal on an oil and gas platform. We also took the video to NOAA scientist Emma Hickerson. She said it is unclear if the reef is even damaged, and if it is, then you can't tell by our pictures alone what caused it. It actually could be not just one single thing. It could be a culmination of several different things. Hickerson points to warm water in the Gulf, fresh water from the Mississippi River, and heavy rains from two tropical storms as possible causes of any reef damage we're seeing. Dr. Ed Overton has worked with NOAA on responding to chemical spills. He agrees more testing is needed, but suspects dispersants from the spill response are responsible for this. It certainly does cause damage. There's no question about it. I mean. The use of dispersants and dissolving oil in the water column causes damage to animals living in the water column, period. Still, it is important to remember there's no scientific evidence linking what we observed on the rigs to the spill. To be certain, scientists must take samples and run exhaustive tests. It could take years to know the extent of any damage the spill may have caused underwater. Rich Matthews, The Associated Press, New Orleans.